Hi friend, this is Prasad and you're watching Power BI with Prasad. Today I brought another interesting new style of visualizing actuals and target sales by month. But in general, uh, we will sh showcase our actual versus target either in this basic way or else in the IBCS inspired style. Today we will see another way to visualize the same, which will give more detailed information how our actuals and targets are and how we are above the actual uh, the target sales and how and where that we are below the target and what 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 amount of sales that we are lagging at that point. So let's see a couple of other styles also over here. Right. I've created a couple of styles using the same visualization. So we'll go into a detailed way to create this in a step-to-step -step manner. Very first, okay, this was created using Power BI native cluster column chart. If you see here, this is the cluster column chart. Simply, let me explain you the algorithm behind how to create this. It's very simple. If you see here, I do have two different columns. Right? One is showing the actual sales, and the above here, I was trying to show the target sales. It's simple like this. Uh, try to under understand in this way that when your sales is above the target, so show your actual sales and the target. When your sales is below the target, then show the target value and your actual sales. This is the inner logic uh, behind how to create this. And uh, stay up to the end of this video. I'll tell you the key point where you convert this visual to this. Right. I'll explain you in detail uh, with uh, showing the measures, how I created this. Simply, I have taken three different measures. If you see the visualization, I have uh, taken month as an axis, and I'm trying to show this particular actual versus target using these three measures. One is actual sales, one is target sales, one is above target. So let's see in detail what are those measures. The first thing, uh, if uh, thing is right, if you see. I do have uh, total sales and I do have total targets over here, right? Which is nothing but simply the sum of sales and respective targets that particular month. So let's, using this particular base measures, let's understand how we created this. If you see here, I'm not showing all my total sales at every point of my axis. You see here, if my total sales of that particular instance of that particular month, right, you see here, if it is greater than the target value, then only I'm showing the sales. As I said earlier, we'll show the sales when the sales is greater than the target. So this first basic column. If the sales is not greater than, then I'm not showing anything. I'm simply leaving it as a blank. So again, the second one is like target. Let's see the target sales. Target sales. Yeah, this red bar. So to uh, total targets. If it is greater than total sales, then only I'm showing the targets. As I said, explained as I explained earlier. Whenever my target is greater than my total sales, then I'm showing my targets. And at the same time, we need another. At that particular point, when the target is greater than sales, then I wanted to show sales in the second column. But at the same point in the second column, when my sales is greater than target, I need to show the target. So for this particular setup, I've created another measure, which is like both target. If you understand here, that if my total targets is less than total sales, it means if my targets is greater than, I'm showing targets. 
total sorry so uh, if, if i'm showing the total sales at targets or else i'm sorry a bit confused right okay so uh, total targets is less than total sales i'm showing targets else part i'm showing total sales it might look a li little bit confusing but if you understand this very simple if my targets is lesser than my sales then i'm showing my targets in this particular column or else it means if my targets is greater than then the second column i'm showing the total sales simple and dropping this into this particular y axis i'll have this and after that you can create this particular data labels simple i've created a data label over here if you understand if my total targets is less than total sales then so uh, if it means like when the total sales is greater than the targets i'm showing up arrow and okay my difference between the, those two sales and formatting it to my desired format simply if it is not this case then this one so I am using this difference label as a detail for only two values, only two measures. Okay, for the other measure which you see about target, I am not using any detail. I'll show it here. Right? Okay, if you go into this data labels, simply the actual sales, I do have a value which is nothing but sales value. And at the same time, I used a uh, difference label over here in the detail, which gives dynamically, if it is greater than the target, it gives the difference. If it is less than the target, it gives the difference in respective colors itself. At the same time, I created a color measure, which will tell if it is less than, than in red color, if it is greater than, it is in the green color. And at the same time, let's see, how I made this particular visual from this one to this particular style. So before that, okay, we need to go with some coloring. So columns uh, for actual sales are being used dark green color for both the borders, right? Okay, for this one and the fill also. For the other one, the targets, if you see here, for the borders, I've been used dark red and then uh, a light color for a thinner value. But for the other one, this one, right? So if you see this, uh, I've been used white color to fill and then I've used the dark green color for the border. The same time, this particular visual to transform this into our design, the key step that I told that I'll explain in the end is lies in the layout option. Again, you can have this layout option after February 2024. This is the latest update that we got recently. So if you see here, so the space between the categories, space between this categories, I want to increase to 20 points firstly. So the space between uh, these categories has been increased so that we got enough room. The same time, I want to make space between the series, means we, we do have series. This is the series. I want to make the space like 100. It means they'll get overlap. So this is how we can create this kind of visual. So at the same time, right, I hope, let's see uh, the data labels also. For actual sales, we do have the same. For targets also, see if you say I have the same the target value, like the uh, value at the same time, the target value at the same time, the difference from the target to like actual sales. 
And in the about targets, if you see, I didn't use any detail because I want to have only that particular part, so whether it is target, the target value, uh, whether it is a sales, the sales value. So it clears a clear ind indication. So this is my total sales. And it is greater than it is greater than this target sales, which is 127k. And the difference between these two is 52, which is greater than the target. And at the same time, by modifying a right, couple of things, you can have a dynamic title, subtitle, and at the same time, you can create different variations as per your wish. At the same time, just keep in mind that the axis that you do have here, the y-axis, generally, right, the maximum value will be always equal. But if you wanted to have enough room to show the data levels, increase the y-axis a little bit. Either you can do it dynamically by creating a measure or simply uh, here I used a static value. But in general, you want to create a dynamic measure to have some room over here to show uh, the data level to the maximum value also in a clear way. Hope you like this. Uh, please like, share this particular video and I'll come up with another interesting video. Until then, have a great day.